peppers, and then you're kind of rolling into some of these radishes. Hey, it's Jake Mace, the vegan athlete. I got a very special episode to bring you guys today. I'm here in Phoenix at the Phoenix Public Market Cafe. This is an incredible restaurant, as well as an incredible farmer's market. You guys will love to see this episode today because we're gonna show you guys what you can do with some of the produce that you're growing in your garden. And I have my really good friend who's gonna help us out. He's a master chef. He's gonna show you guys how to take the food from your garden and make it into something incredible. Let's go. Hey, hey Aaron, what's you. happening? Listen, I'm so excited you're here. I wanted to tell you a little bit about the story of the Phoenix Public Market Cafe. Because this is a weird area. You have a market, you have a restaurant, and so is it combined? Is it are they related? They're not. The farmers market is actually a nonprofit, the community food connections nonprofit. We call it the Phoenix Public Market Open Air. Okay. We're the Phoenix Public Market Cafe. And it's every Saturday in Phoenix. Every Saturday, all year long, really? rain or shine. That's cool. Yeah. I found this building nine years ago and the farmers market is that it had already been open for a year and you know as a chef there's no bigger dream to be able to have a restaurant you can walk out your door go shopping at come back and cook food and that's what we're going to do today flavor freshness and also you know for us one of our big things is building community through food yeah so building relationships with farmers and um, and then passing that along to the customers you know we're I look at myself as a middleman I'm buying from the farmers cooking and giving to the customers those relationships to me are some super super important so what do you have planned for us today we're gonna go and walk the market we're gonna walk the market food. look at some stuff I'm gonna walk in make a really simple recipe that people at home could probably potentially make I gotta tell you I love vegetables in Arizona nothing shines better than our local produce herbs I mean it really we're, we're in a great spot because of our warm weather that's where we shine in Arizona is our vegetables so it's this morning because I'm the vegan athlete you got some vegan themed dishes I got some but vegan stuff for you if people are not vegan they can still we got a rotisserie with all kinds of meats and fish and all kinds of great stuff. So I'm excited. Good. Let's I take love a food walk. and you're amazing. So let's go. <laughs> let's go check out the market. Thank you. Green. This guy right here, I think this is it. Yeah, I'm gonna take one of these right here. I love bread so much, and oh, I like good. I love carbs all the time. Good, good. I see so, dirt. This is right up my alley. Yeah, have you ever had their bread? No, no. It's amazing. It's one. It's by far one of the best breads in really? Arizona. I mean, just look at that look. That looks incredible. I mean, when you look at something like this one, all of them are shaped differently. You know, none of them are perfect. They're all handmade. I've been to their to to where their bakery, and you know, they also have an eatery in front of the bakery called Noble Eatery, and they have tons of vegan options, mostly grains. Where where are they at? On McDowell, just east of the 51. So the farmer's market, is it changing throughout the entire year? It is, and you know, I'm glad you brought that up because right now in October is a very interesting time for Arizona because we're kind of going at the end of summer mm -hmm. and we're coming into fall. You have this lap over time period where you have summer ingredients and you have fall ingredients. And so it makes it interesting to cook with. You know, they consider it a gapping time. Because you're still getting tomatoes, but yet you're also getting your winter greens. You are, you're getting, you know, and another thing that happens right now is, is in the summertime, because it's so hot, here a lot of farmers they grow cover crops the cover right. crops are all the squashes the winter squashes the gourds butternuts all that stuff is a cover crop and so right now is when we're getting abundance of it interesting enough we buy we pre-buy all the cover crops for a few farms and we pay like 80 cents a pound for butternut squash and then we make pumpkin soup from October 1st all the way until January you know and I had this idea when they had an abundance of it I said I'll just buy it all pre yeah. And then they store for us, we order it, they drop it off to us, and we make pumpkin, wow. butternut squash soup all at both my restaurants. And then it's only traveling a couple miles to get to your restaurant. It's it's perfect. And so it stores really well. And that's why your food's so good, Aaron. That's why it's so good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Local and fresh. This is an interesting table because you know you have a still a lot of the summer stuff coming along. You know, this particularly the the cucumbers, the melons. 
um, you know, the eggplants, the peppers, and then you're kind of rolling into some of these radishes, yeah. which is, you know, the first crop of this. These are quick growers. They got them in early. So we're going to grab some stuff from here. This is going to be part of our dish is, is some of the stuff from the and items from here. I mean, just as a healthy guy, I'm growing a garden. Yeah. I love the colors of my garden. Oh, yeah. And so the colors of this tell me that the food is nutrient dense and fresh. When I'm sent. Ready to fuel my body. When I'm sent. I mean, look at all the beautiful yellows and the greens and then you go into the reds. I mean, you know when that's happening that this is really impactful to your health. Tell me about these guys. What are these little cantaloupes right here? They're uh, baby cantaloupes. They don't grow uh, any bigger than this. Really? And bitterness to it but no sour no sour it's interesting so my son is two wow. years old I don't want to give him a bunch of sugar so I buy these and then I make I juice it and then he loves it and it's not I'm not having to make like sugary lemonade for him once again you're seeing you know tomatoes and then all of a sudden fall yes most of the people that I know in my social network don't know what foods ripen at what time of the year anymore yeah because yeah. the stores have the same food all, all the time, the time. All so the markets time. like this will teach you about the seasons well that's why I come here every Saturday morning I'm here and one I don't know if you noticed, but I mean, we bumped into, uh, you know, I've, I've seen 10 people here I've known since I got here. Yeah, yeah. It's such a community. It's so great. It's, it cheers me up. It gets my day started. And it gets me in tune with what's to, what to cook. Yeah. And so I can get in tune with what's going on. And that's another reason why I have a garden. I purposely built a garden because if I'm, if I see a squash going in my garden, I know the farmers are growing it as well. So it keeps me really in tune with the seasons. James and John. What's up, Jake? Oh, I'm Jake. Oh, we have oranges, but it's all gone. Yeah. Uh, all them. This is also one of my favorite vendors. I love the honey. She's awesome, a great lady. How long have you been here at the market? Maybe 10 years. 10 years. Wow. So she's one of the original vendors. I mean, look at her booth, how beautiful it is. You know, as most people who are vegan, vegetarian, don't do honey. Yeah. But I'm of the opinion that if it's local, yeah. if it's grown in your city, and if you know the name of the beekeeper, yeah. it's much better than just buying store-bought sugar yeah. honey. I agree 100%. You know, and the one thing you can see that's interesting, that I challenge people to go to the market and look for things like, you know, the pollen. The pollen. This is a, a honey with turmeric in it. So you can put the pumpkin spice honey in your pumpkin spice latte. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> turmeric honey, people might not know what to do with it, but buying it and trying new things, mm -hmm. that's what makes things cooking fun. That's and why going to the market is so important. It's, it's, it's just the connection's amazing. Exactly. I'm going to come back and I'm going to buy this for a jack-o'-lantern. This is incredible. Yeah, look how big this is. My favorite fruit, I've decided the entire world, is melon. We're going to make a I melon gazpacho. And, um, I love gazpacho. Good, good, good. I found that in Arizona, one of the most beautiful things is our melons. Mm -hmm. um, with the native melons and all the different varieties that are coming from native seed and all of that, melons are really, in the summertime, I eat a melon a day. 
for almost three months. All different varieties. All different varieties from my garden, from the farmer's market. I mean, my wife keeps telling me it's not gonna make me skinny, but I sure love them. <laughs> no, it's better than eating candy that's man-made. It's much better. You know, if you think about foods and the way they grow, you know, they grow for a reason. So in the summertime, think about all the things that are growing, melons, tomatoes, all that stuff nourishes and replenishes your body when you need it most. Right. Then you go into the winter time and then you have the hardier stuff, the root vegetables and all that stuff. So greens, winter greens to keep you healthy during flu yeah. season. And that's why it's so important to eat seasonal, to eat local. Yeah. one of my favorite farmers. Okay. Um, we love her, she's been out here for 10 years. Um, we buy a lot of produce from her at both of my restaurants. Her farm is in South Phoenix. She's just an overall awesome lady. And so everything here is just really, really top notch from her. So these are probably towards just, the end of these peppers. And I mean like five, six varieties of eggplant. Yeah. Because you go to oh, the yeah. store, you just get eggplant. Yeah. But you go to the market, you get six varieties of eggplant of all different kinds. This is one of my favorite vegetables. And you know. Okra is one of those things that you have to know what you're doing with it and it tastes amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. I love it raw. Like when it's. Nice and tender. Yeah. Oh my God. This is how I, I generally the okra at my house never makes it in the kitchen. I actually banned okra from my kitchen. Yeah, oh really? Yeah, because the cooks weren't <laughs> cooking it right. Oh. And then I I learned to love it over time, and now we have okra. And now all it's, back. The, it's always back. So cool. and also once again okra here in Arizona, it loves the heat. Yeah. It just oh my God. Loves the heat. I mean, like eggplant, peppers, okra. Love the heat. We got some nice mizuna. Right I just here. found about mizuna last year, and it's a really Really amazing green. Dinosaur kale is one of my favorite kinds of kale. Me too. I love it so much. <clears throat> Once again, this is more of a winter thing, but because she probably has this protected in shade yep. and she's able to grow it. And so when I look at this, it's very hardy, this this kale. It's yep. not super tender. So you just have to use it different. Cook it, shred it thinly. Sometimes with kale you can shred it thinly juice lemon and salt on it and let it sit and it will tenderize it and that's another little trick if your kale is coming from a hot climate. This is Maya, hey, good Jake. Jake. Finally Jake and Maya get to meet. I love your produce, it looks so good. Thanks, we tried, we worked really hard at it. It's looking great. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. What are these kind of peppers? Those are shishitas. These are what the they look like green. And they're not spicy really, right? These are pretty mild right now. So Aaron, what have you picked up from Maya's farm? So right here we have some icicle radishes. And and these are awesome. Just a pure look at them, they're cool. They look like icicles. They look like icicles right there. And then I got a few peppers that we're gonna put into the gazpacho. Okay. You know, I wanted some green ones. The color palette we're gonna have in there is some green uh, from the these peppers here. These are also sweet, I know that. They're not too spicy. And then I got flowers. Every you brought me flowers? You know, to be honest with you, they're from my wife. Oh, okay. <laughs> Every Saturday when she has flowers, Maya grows the most beautiful flowers. I buy them, I bring them home from my wife, and then she's happy all week. <laughs> Smart man. Smart man. It's great to meet you. We gotta do a video at your place. Sometime. Yeah, the community exchange, you know, these guys are interesting because they're kind of gatherers. Okay. They go to backyards, they find stuff. Well, They'll find some date palms that are fruiting or yeah, something like that. Yeah, they, they literally, sometimes wow. I've come in and i found little packets of fennel seed. They've hand harvested, oh. they've dried flowers. They're kind of like more gatherers and backyard gardeners. Hmm. And they're always here every single week and they always and have always new stuff probably. it's always new stuff and sometimes it like um it's sometimes it's really small and sometimes it's abundant depending on what they can gather from their friends and neighbors and they're one of the first places i go mm. because it's just totally interesting That's so right. let's, let's go check it out let's check it out little bok choy that they you know that they just took the time put it in the bag what i'm looking for is interesting stuff yeah. you know what i do a lot on saturday i buy food for my family all week long right. so i come here and i find interesting things i don't want to go to the grocery store and so I find these little interesting things and then I have new um, flavors for my family all the time all week long that I can cook for them. This right here. So this is a type of squash. I take these, I cut them in half, I sear them, and then I roast them and it's just beautiful in texture. Look at that guy. 
looks so good. Different peppers. You got a little poblano chili. You have all these different chili diablo. This is a this is the tunas of the prickly pear fruit. Yeah. And then this is the tunas that you dried. Uh huh. So I, it's the cactus fruit. And then where did you so add? I, to I it? juice it and then I put a little bit of coconut meat in there to add a little fat to it to make it you know stick together. But I add this. Right. This is a thickener to make it a little thicker. And this thickener is carob powder. Just carob powder. From locally grown carob trees. Yeah, the carob trees are all over the place. Like cons and carobs are all over. Like and same with mulberries. And people just don't know that they're edible. People don't mess with any of them. And yeah. I like I really like to get the mulberries and dehydrate them because they only last three days off the tree or they'll you know go bad. So this is a local Locally grown coconut meat, carob powder, carob powder, uh, uh, prickly pear fruit, fruit roll up. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's amazing. It's super antioxidants. You eat it, you're like, well, you can feel the power of it. You're like, wow. Wow. Yeah, it's awesome. So really, this is enough to make us a nice lunch. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go get some pottery. We're gonna go get some local handcrafted pottery. Okay. Of the food we're gonna serve it in. That's one of the things I love about this market. You can get all kinds of awesome stuff. This is called Clay Madness. Okay. It makes the pottery here, and then um, we're gonna use it. And we're gonna serve our dish in it. Let's go. Go check it out, and can I come back here and shop with you every Saturday? You bet. Every Saturday. I'm okay. Here. <laughs> You're doing the pottery doing right pottery now. Right here. What are you making right now? This is, uh, and it's done actually. A nice drinking glass. It's a fifteen dollar glass. How come you don't have Patrick Swayze behind you yeah. hugging you from the back? No, I, I don't need dead people. <laughs> okay. Freak <laughs> So they got a wheel around the corner. Okay, let's go do it. You got it. So one thing I was going to also tell you is, um, once again, why I love, I built the restaurant here. Mm -hmm. You know, I built this restaurant purely for myself. Because literally your restaurant is right next to the market. Kitchen, farmer's market. It's 10 steps away. 10 steps away. I mean, you know, and you, I mean, how many restaurants do you know have a farmer's market in their front door? I don't. You know, it's very rare. Uh -huh. And so, you know, I purely built this restaurant. It's close to my house. I can come here and have breakfast every morning. I go to the farmer's market. Um, you know, it is obviously a business, but one of the things I love about it is, is that I can come here and play. Yeah, exactly. So it's great. I mean, to see you in the market is like watching the kid in the candy store. Well, not only that, my customers see me yeah. out shopping, and so they, they they know our food's fresh because they see the chefs out there shopping, they're, they're picking up product, and so they know that they're going to have fresh, local produce in our restaurant. That was made and picked in its ripe state. There you go. There you go. Let's go inside. Come on in. Let's go.